For today's video, we've got 100 magic sponges and we're gonna see what they can do compared to a normal sponge. Guys, this is what's called a magic eraser. If you've never used these before, they're called magic sponges because you just use water and then they're supposed to be really good at cleaning stuff. You just get it wet and then you scrub away at stuff and it takes it off. That's the idea at least. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do some tests with them. These are the brand name of magic eraser, magic sponge. What they're made of is something called a melamine foam. The difference is obvious just looking at it. Yeah, it's not the same as a regular sponge. It acts like a sponge, it still sucks up and absorbs water but the material that it's made of is very different. Basically, the entire sponge is made of a microabrasive, and the water just helps it carry its microabrasive properties into whatever you're cleaning. So it just scrubs clean whatever it is you've got, you know, it just scrubs on the surface, which can be great because it's really good at removing supposedly crayon from the walls, like if your kid draws on the walls of crayon, it's supposed to be good, things like that, other little stains, but you do have to be careful sometimes because it can occasionally clean more than you wanted it to. It will clean through the crayon and the paint and maybe the drywall if you're not careful. <laughs> we have our brand name Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. But I don't trust that these are all you bought. Yep, there we go. However, you don't have to get the brand name ones. This is a 100 pack of non-brand name ones. This was like $18. Okay. It's very lightweight. I think it is the same material. There may be a difference in quality though. This is an excessive amount of sponges. Or is it just the right amount of sponges? I mean, for us, excessive is the right amount. Our brand name versus our 100 pack for $18. <laughs> slightly different shape. There is a slightly different texture and color. As I'm looking at the camera monitor here, it looks on camera like this one, the off-brand is more of a white color and this one's sort of a grayer. In real life, it honestly looks like the opposite. Um, this one looks brighter white, at least if it's facing right at me. If it's at an angle, it seems to change a little bit, but it is strange that on camera, the effect is not the same as with the naked eye. You know the expression, find a needle in a haystack? Yeah, are we trying to find the brand name ones Finding now? Finding a slightly larger <laughs> white sponge in a pile of 103 white sponges. Got it. I'm really good at this game. Okay guys, for some reason, this many sponges all together is very entertaining, but we actually do want to test these out. How different are these from a regular magic eraser and how different are they from just a normal kitchen sponge? And what other weird things can you do with them? Where's my torch? Callie, of course, is interested in a burn test. So we're gonna see what happens if you apply heat. We're gonna hit it with a torch and then we're gonna try soaking it in fuel and then hitting it with a torch. Good plan, news, everyone. Do you have a plan on how to put that out? I sure don't, Nate. You should formulate one very quickly. <laughs> the sponge is acting like a wick. Yeah, so it's not, you know, it's not melting. Oh, it is still melting, absolutely still melting, but not as fast as I would have thought. Also, look at how I can just put little spots in it. That's neat. All right, I'll come up with a plan. Normally, when we put out fires like that, like, we've had things at the dome that we've, you know, lit on fire in a pot and we'll slide a board over it to put it out. You normally can't see the way that the fire is being choked to death. But I do like this. This is kind of an interesting mm -hmm. example of why when you're putting something out, it's better to slide it over. Because right now, if I just drop this on, it, you can it see the fire is still there <laughs> for multiple seconds just because we're using glass to put it out. You're like, oh, and okay, now it's out. So there's a certain amount of time where it is still on fire and then it's not. You should bite it. I want to bite it, but I'm worried it's going to be like biting into insulation. The noise, the noise that made is the worst thing I've ever heard. Nope. Do you know what the number one thing it says to avoid, Nate? Do not use on skin or other body parts. Well, teeth count. This is fairly cooled down now and you can just get an idea of how much isopropyl alcohol I put in that. This sponge is still kind of intact here. Oh, there we go, all right. So it did start burning the outside. Now obviously there's still fuel left so it wasn't really getting to this yet. But even this burnt piece, it didn't melt the way I thought it would. It's just a little bit more delicate. It's still a sponge. All right, let's try one without fuel now. Let's see what kind of result we get there. Is your finger hurting at all? Nope. Huh. And yes. Wow. So it kind of insulated It too. insulated a lot. 
Yeah, it's the side that you gotta worry about. Sure enough, nothing. That is so freaking cool. That did a lot to insulate the heat, like a lot. And it's not really burning and it's not really melting. This is a very odd material. It's, yeah, burning, melting. I just wanna do a clean test. We get stuff on our desk all the time. So I'm just gonna do a sponge, a little bit of water here. And to be completely honest, I've lost track of what some of these things are. I don't know what caused those drips. That's about as aggressively as I can attack that. Let's try our magic sponge stuff here. Uh, it's doing a little bit more. You can see some pink I'm in seeing, the water. I'm seeing more black on the sponge though. I think you're taking off the I very well might be. It's also uh, shredding the sponge fabulously. <laughs> it just dissolves it. The sponge itself is the abrasive and cleaning material. So it does get worn away as you use it. It's taken off some. All right. Not all. So it doesn't show up super well. We are drawing on a black surface, but it's still there. A regular sponge. That's just gone. The regular sponge did something. The magic sponge did more. Well, let me tell you something. For cleaning light switch covers, these things are fantastic. That worked great. Oh, are you undoing the whole? No, just uh, being really impressed with it right now. We haven't really tried to clean the ceiling. And I want to leave most of it. It's Grant's legacy here, but I wanted to see what the difference is going to be. Regular sponge, nothing. Magic sponge. Uh, definitely. So now <laughs> we know. Smoke from gasoline. <laughs> Frozen gasoline. <laughs> Smoke from frozen gasoline that's been lit on fire on house paint. It's great. Works so good. Because I know a lot of you probably are running into that same problem with all the smoke from your frozen gasoline. If you that's guys been lit have on fire. set stuff on fire, blown stuff up in your uh, house, now you know. Obviously, not a completely definitive test, but mm -hmm. shows that there are some things that this cleans really well. The normal sponge doesn't. We have hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate in a solution with some dish soap. These together should give us a bit of an elephant toothpaste reaction. Let's test that out just real quick on a small scale. A little bit of this soapy potassium permanganate water. I'm just gonna drip a little bit of our <coughs> hydrogen peroxide on there. And look at that, foaming up, lovely. So here's the plan. I'm going to put the sponge in the hydrogen peroxide on one side just for a little bit then let it sit in the potassium permanganate soap solution on the other side of the sponge. And then inside this jar, I'm gonna squeeze it together and see what kind of reaction happens. Neat. It is. Whoa, uh-oh. So that's cool, but I want that reaction to happen in the sponge. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get more of the hydrogen peroxide absorbed into this sponge. I think we're gonna get a little bit more. That looks pretty good. It's working. That was awesome. It's working. <laughs> that is bizarre. Elephant but what's weird isn't also supposed to move slow. is it's pushed pure hydrogen peroxide out of the sponge. But you're not so yet. So it's clear all the way around and that's just plain hydrogen peroxide unreacted. Yeah. So as the foam expanded, it pushed down and like squeezed out the other hydrogen peroxide. Okay, yeah, see, same thing you said before. The hydrogen peroxide is just dripping out the bottom starts reacting and the reaction oh obviously expands. Look at this side. It pushes the unreacted stuff out. And now you're just like dripping pure mm -hmm. foam. You bet I am. This is such a warm steam coming off of this. It's really cool. It looks like you're burning it. That's what I was hoping for right there is I actually like inject it into the side and then it starts reacting. Inside it grows it. out the sponge. <laughs> I want to see if we can oh blend this into like a sponge slurry. I don't know why, I just thought it sounded fun to try. Just watch, we're gonna find out like that this is the secret to making starlight. All right, now first I'm gonna try this with no water at all, just sponges. And I have very little hope for this doing almost anything, but I've been surprised before. Hmm. Okay. Quite. 
observe as the sponge pieces are battered <laughs> around. And Should we just try a whole sponge? It's so fluffy. I think it actually is chopping it. Is, it is, it is. I didn't think it was going to do anything. No. I thought it would just like sort of bounce and float on top. What have you made? Slightly warm sponge fluff. Here's some slightly warm sponge fluff for you. I it's genuinely moldable. didn't. I genuinely didn't think anything was going to happen to it. All right, let's add some water. See yes. what happens. Well, now you've made wet sponge. <laughs> sponge slurry. Oh, needs more sponge. Needs more water and sponge. Needs, needs more of everything. Needs more. Just, just more. I just poured in like a cup of water, <laughs> and none of it is resting on the bottom. Nope. <laughs> All right, let's try that with the lid. Now that's a sponge slurry. Some of it is not being reached. Maybe at the high speed? There we go. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, it's leaking. Leaking? It, it pushed the top, the lid off. You know what this feels like? Remember when we made like the biggest spitball out of water and maybe 20 rolls of toilet paper and shot it against the house? This feels like that. It looks like a Disney cartoon snowball. It weirdly like still sticks to itself pretty yeah. well. Let's put in another one and let's just pulverize it as much as we possibly can. That wasn't as high up as this thing goes. Just keep it going for a while. Yep, with a few more sponges. <laughs> Gets going too fast and just bounces and just pushes the lid off, starts leaking, but I think that's pretty well pulverized at this point. All of the water just drains right out. It doesn't hold on to it. I wonder if it dries out if what we've made is actually a dust. It's just so oh, cohesive. That's yeah. Well, we can get a lot of the water out just by squeezing. It's the worst snowman ever. <laughs> okay, just keep it on. We just cleaned the studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that works for like cleaning your teeth. No, you're taking off your enamel. Stop. I don't need teeth on that. Guys, that's it for today. But you know, we've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video. We'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.